Hello. Let's try and move this lamp so it stops shining off my good big brilliant forehead. Look at that. Is that a bit better? Yeah. My camera's not very good. Why is that not being very good? <laughs> right. Okay. Well, uh, there's nobody here at the moment, so we, should, we can just talk amongst ourselves. I love the way he's looking at everything and he's like, Ooh. I will destroy it. Yeah. He's, oh, you're frozen. No, I'm not. You are frozen. What are you doing, young man? Right. Uh, we've come to you early because, as you can see, we were going to be doing this at 7 o'clock tonight, but as you can see, young man, remember little tiny Finley? He's not so tiny anymore. Um, and, him. and those of you who've been with us uh, knew him when he was a bump and knew him when he was born, and now look at the size of him. Well, he was born a rugby player anyway. Um, but, yeah. So, yes, that is my grandson. Hiya, Joe, you all right? So we are going to do, hopefully, are we actually going to go back to doing this on Sundays now? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah? All right, cool. Right. Oh, you're frozen again. Oh, no, I'm not. You did, you froze. Still frozen. No, I'm not I'm frozen. On my Hang on, I might be on the neighbour's Wi-Fi. We're not too bad. Been wondering how you were, don't hear from you for, uh, for ages. Do we, young lady? Oh, not you, the other one, Joe. And you're frozen again. Are you on the PC? Oh, what did you do? I was on the neighbour's Wi-Fi, so I switched over. Ah, right, okay. Um, right. So, for those of you who don't know anything about what, what's been happening the last few weeks, uh, as you can see, young Finlius Wibblius Pignus has grown up. Um, Finn, say hello. 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 Say yes, hello. hello. Or just in the blowing raspberries. Hello. hello. Billy, wave. Say hello to your adoring fans. Come on. Say hello. All right, say hello. Where's Finn? Where's Finn? Where's Finn? Where's Finn? Is that your ears, mate? Where's your ears? Where's Finn? Where's your ears? <laughs> oh, dear. Right, um, uh, uh, for team members who are interested, there is a an investigation uh, on the 25th of June. And if you just bear with me, it's with, it's, it's, it's with my other team. But if you bear with me, I will let you know where it is. It's at a big uh, hall somewhere. Um, it doesn't help, does it? It's in a big hall somewhere. Right, where is... Ah, here it is. Do, 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 do. Right, it is at... Hmm. Just got... No, and of course. Ah, here we are. Grendon Hall in Northampton on the 25th of June this year. So, uh, team members, if you would like to join us for this investigation, uh, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> Grendon Hall, Northampton, 25th of June this year. And it's a massive one. It, it's a massive place, big ground, loads of grounds, everything. So, um, if you want to come along, please message me. And I will let you know the details, okay? And uh, look at you. I don't know. Right. Shall we uh, uh, start with this then? When, yeah. When, yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay. So tonight uh, we've uh, flipped a coin and Taylor chose the top 10. Taylor, not Finley, chose the top 10 list for tonight. So tonight we have got. Uh, where's me? There it is. We've got there. top 10 captivating mysteries that are yet to be solved. There you go. That. Top 10 captivating mysteries which are yet to be solved. 
And starting at number 10 is the Hemet Maze Stone. Over to you. Finley, tell us all about the Hemet Maze Stone. It was 1940, and a ranch on the outskirts of Hemet, California, was surveying the property, well, a rancher, sorry, was surveying his property, when he came across a large boulder with a strange image carved into it. Archaeologists were called, and upon further investigation, they found artifacts near the stone, which led them to conclude that the carving was the carving on the boulder was around 500 years old. The stone carving is resemblant. Swastika, reminiscent of a swastika. Reminiscent shape. of a swastika shape, a symbol used for millennia in Asia and Native American art and forms an intricate maze, swastika shape, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, it forms an intricate, intricate maze. This makes it difficult for the, okay, for the petroglyphic design found in the US, found in the US as these are usually images of animals, people, and nature. A theory was put forward after, the, after stones with the similar maze image were found near the original stone. It explained that Chinese sailors may have carved them after being shipwrecked in California. However, to this day, it remains unclear whether this is a theory, whether this theory is true. Archaeologists also still don't know the reason for the carving. Uh <laughs> Billy, Billy, Bali. Right. Um, those of you who are commenting, <laughs> oh, reason, they are not coming up on, on here. I know somebody said uh, hi, Mark. I got no idea who it is because this has been used as a chocolate spoon. So let me just come back into it again. See if I can actually. Oh. Billy, Billy, Bali, Bali, just chocolate. No, it's not showing the comments. Right. Um, that stone is. Huh? Hey. What? What do you reckon that stone is? I reckon it's a stone. It's definitely a stone, but who do you reckon did it? Um, I, I, that theory that it was a uh, shipwreck sailor seems quite normal. It looks very um. But you guys can't see it. It looks very. Mm, it reminds me of the Nat stuff on the Nazca lines, <laughs> with like lots of intricate maze lines done in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As as usual, what I'll do at the end of the uh, um, show, I will put the link to all these uh, to this list so you can see all the pictures in the uh, comment section at the end of the show. Okay. Right. Yeah, not right. So number nine. Lucy says, "Hi, Mark." Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hello. I know. How you doing? Right. Yeah. For some reason. Look, it's not coming up. It's not giving me the comments. Not giving me the names. Nothing. I don't know why. That's because my phone is a a ding -dong. <laughs> Yeah, one of those, Finley. I completely agree. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? Oh, I was being him. I said I got it. got it. Right. Number nine. Rock apes. So-called cryptid sightings usually consist of blurry images or video footage that may or may not resemble some kind of creature, whether it's Bigfoot, Nessie, or some other folklore beast. And as you guys. Know, Regular review is though um, uh, cryptozoology and ufology is my specialty. During the Vietnam War, we did a show about these yeah, a couple of years ago. Uh, cryptid sightings were numerous, and many American troops gave detailed account of what they believed was an encounter with a rock ape or batut tut, batut tut, b a t u t u t. Uh, a particular hill in Vietnam came to be known as Monkey Mountain after a high number of rock ape sightings purportedly took place there. Encounters with rock apes usually saw the cryptids throwing rocks back at troops. Some even hurled grenades back at the soldiers. Nice. 
Um, the creatures are said to be at least six foot tall with long limbs and big stomachs. It is thought that they... Oh, live in troops, not as in the army, but live in packs, which are called troops, instead of navigating the Vietnam jungles alone. Uh, reports of the rock apes being covered in reddish-brown hair has caused some to think that they were simply orangutans. However, orangutans became extinct in Vietnam thousands of years ago. Another theory is that the troops were hallucinating because of the extreme stress and the unfamiliar environment. In 1974, the Vietnam's Vietnam People's Army launched an expedition to try and capture a rock ape for research purposes, but nothing ever came of it. Um, if I remember rightly, when we did the show before, um, there were there has been a new genus of ape found over there, and it's blah, 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 blah. you've got the orangutan and you've got the orang pendek, which is a, a, a cryptid. I'm sure that these were included in the orangutan. Excuse me, young man. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, that was uh, number nine on the uh, mysterious mystery that are not that are yet to be solved. Be so there you go. The rock apes that nobody has ever uh, found, and uh, they're now trying to turn around and say it was soldiers uh, hallucinating. But to be fair, it wasn't stress that made them hallucinate. It was the LSD that they were experimenting with because they were the um, guinea pigs for LSD, weren't they? So, uh, over to you, Taylorius Maylorius. Okay. Number no, number okay. eight. A layer ghost lights. A, yeah, a layer ghost lights. Spooky myst mysteries are usually the most popular. Historic places in particular have often have secrets lurking around every corner. West Bengal was found was founded in 1947 and over the years has become famous for its creepy buildings and cemeteries. One of its main West claims Bengal is in India. West Bengal in India. I know. One of its can you not because it takes me forever to go back to what I was saying. One of its main claims to spooky fame is the Alaya ghost lights that flicker above the swamps here. I guess there, because it's not here, this is England. Ghost lights have been reported around the world, but the Alea lights seem sinister in their intent. He's being sinister in his, in his intent. It is alleged that many fishermen have drowned after being transfixed by them. It is also believed that the lights are the spirits of the dead fishermen who are now stuck in the marshes. Urban legend says that several bodies of fishermen have washed up on the shores of the swamps and that the remains were surrounded by a strange mist. Their deaths were never explained. The first scientific explanation for the ghost lights was that the lightning interacts with the gas over the swamps, creating the light. This theory was rejected because the lights seem to move in tandem with people who come close to them. Whew. Other theories say that fireflies and barn owls are responsible for this phenomenon. For now, however, the obvious cause of the lights may remain a mystery. Hmm. What do you mean? I would have said that it has something to do with the gas and it being heated somehow. Maybe it's a type of gas. Oh my God. Maybe it's a type of gas that um is sensitive to the temperature of a human. Maybe. Do you reckon it could be a gas that picks up on our latent electrical frequency? And it, like balloons, you know, when balloons stick to you with static and you can walk and they can move along beside you. Something yeah. like that. Uh, hiya, Bernie. Uh, Mark Towers. Hiya, mate. Uh, and Amber, hiya. Um, are all watching. So brilliant. And uh, uh, that yelling in the background is is my grandson, Finley, who for a lot of you, when you last saw it, Finley was about that big. Now he's a girt big warrior. He's girt big, twittling girt big <sighs> rugby player. And yeah. So, and that, that other one, as you all know, is the tailor, my youngest daughter. So that was 
Oh, the Alea Ghost Lights. There's actually, again, what I will do is I'll put the link to this in the chat section right at the end of the show. And then you can all go and have a look and uh, have a look at the pictures and videos of all these things and, you know, make your own mind up. Right. So, in at number seven. He is pulling just one singular hair. <laughs> it's the missing nuclear bomb. Oh, my God. Did I dreamt last night, and I woke up because of this in my dream. I, I was, you know, they say that in your dreams when you see you or you're you, but everyone else is different. You, you got, you guys are all there, and there was a ghost. I had what, what I had hair in this particular dream, and uh, there was a ghost <laughs> plucking at one hair in my head, and I was getting beat, pissed off with it, and I, I woke myself up going, "Will you get the fuck off?" And then I was like. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, that was a dream I had about a ghost sitting on me. I'd pick plucking out of air. Oh. Well, it's a ghost, it's a Finley. Sorry? So, well, it's not a ghost, it's a Finley. It, it's a Finley, yeah. Um, it's a Finley. He is next door. Okay. Right, so the missing nuclear okay. bomb. It's just arrived. It's just come back. Yeah. Okay. The missing nuclear bomb. Uh, on February the fifth, nineteen fifty-eight. Actually, there's a film about this as well. An F eighty-six fighter plane collided with a B forty-seven bomber during a practice exercise. That was careless, wasn't it? Uh, the bomber was carrying a, a Mark three four hundred kilogram nuclear bomb at the time of the collision. And for the safety of the air crew, the bomb was dropped from the plane. There was no explosion as the bomb struck the sea below. An initial search ensued for the discarded bomb, and then another, and another. The bomb was never found. There is some disagreement and controversy about whether the bomb is a functional weapon or whether it had a dummy core installed. I'm sorry, but if you're on a practice exercise, why would you be carrying a live nuclear warhead? You wouldn't. Um, searches for the bomb continued, and in 2004... Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Derek Duke, what a name, Derek Duke, uh, announced that he narrowed the search field down to an area the size of a football field. However, this too was a dead end. The bomb is believed to still be in water off Tybee Island and still hold 400 pounds of explosives. Further searches are now on hold with the Air Force saying it's best to leave the weapon be. You think? Out. Um... My only problem with that with that mystery is it's they were on a on a practice exercise. They were on exercise. They shouldn't have been carrying a live warhead, regardless. If they were carrying a, a live warhead, they were not on exercise. The other jet may have been on exercise, but that one, the uh, the bomber wasn't. So uh, you know, either somebody's selling porky pies, or it was a it was um, a fake, a dud. You know, so we shall see. There is a film about this. I remember watching it. Very famous film. Good one. Right. Mrs. What have we got next? Number, what are we on? Number six? Mysterious Particles. Mysterious Particles. Since 2016, ultra-high energy particles have shot up through the thick ice in Antarctica three times. These events set off detectors in the Antarctic Impulsive Transit Transient, and transient Antenna experience. I have no idea what that is. Uh, these events also didn't match the behaviour of standard model particles. They look like ultra high energy nu neutrons. Neutrinos. Neutrinos. Fucking name. I could literally just go <laughs> that means the same. Anyway. However, if they were neutrinos, they should not have been able to pass through the Earth. Yeah. Duh. Scientists have produced several theories to explain the phenomenon, including sterile, fuck me, sterile neutrinos and yeah. atypical dark matter distributions. Hi, Dave. That mean anything to you guys? Because uh, I, I. I'm not, I literally, there's no point in me reading this. Uh, 
At a loss for answers, some have yet turned to unconventional theories. The strangest of the bunch says that the particles may be evidence of a parallel universe where time, where time goes backwards and the Big Bang would mean the end of the world. But what shit? Yeah, I didn't understand that for that. But I was going to say, um, that's uh, clapping hands. That's Dave. Hello. Dave, um, they have proved, or they they found a parallel universe. They they scientists have found uh, found it, and they they proved it with whatever tests they did. But they think that it runs backwards. They found several parallel universes now, and literally less than an atom's width away from us but we just can't access it but one of them they think does run backwards and all i can say is if for those of you who've ever watched red dwarf if you've ever seen the uh go for a poop sorry go for a poop yeah <laughs> that episode of uh when he, they've gone to parallel universe where it runs backwards you'll remember when cat went and had a poop that's all i'm saying i'm just gonna leave that one exactly where it is Anyway, let's try doing one that we can all understand because I didn't understand it. Bloody great. Nothing about that. Uh, so we have got in our top 10 list of captivating mysteries that are yet to be solved. We have got <laughs> number five uh, the Moorgate tragedy, uh, which was the Moorgate tube disaster, which happened three years after I was born. This happened in 1975. Uh, on February 10th, put my teeth back in. <laughs> on February the 28th, 1975, a train crashed while travelling along the northern city line in London. <gasps> 43 people died, another 74 were injured, and the accident became known as the worst of its kind during peacetime. The tragedy came after the train failed to stop at a platform, and it crashed into a concrete wall at the end of the tunnel at the Moorgate station. The rescue operation lasted six days, and engineers started investigating the cause of the accident immediately after. However, they couldn't find an answer. The, the train was mechanically sound, which led them to suspect that the train driver was to blame. It was found that the driver had his hand on the power handle until two seconds before the impact. And he didn't try to protect his face as the train slammed into the concrete. What? Survivors told authorities that the driver behaved, behaved strangely, almost zombie-like, as the train sped towards its horrible fate. At that time, 56-year-old Leslie Newson had been with London Transport for six years and had no, there had been no red flags regarding his state of mind during that time. Uh, on the day of the crash, he had money on him that was meant for his daughter's car, uh, and there was no indication that he'd been suicidal or intended to perform an act of terror. Uh, an autopsy in Newson revealed that he was in good health and he had a tiny amount of alcohol in his system. What happened to Newson that day remains unknown. Whether he'd been in a, a fug fugal state or given a substance that altered his thinking, it also remains unknown whether he deliberately crashed the train or whether an undiscovered condition caused him to become blank and crash the train. Ooh. What do you make of that one? That's a bit weird. I want to be telling Wayne off for that. Eh? I want to be telling Wayne off for that one. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Taylor Zarrow Sheldon, his dad, is a manager for TfL Transport for London. Um, it sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? And there's, there's been quite a few cases of uh, certain... Of... One second. It was on CP just bringing down stairs for an hour. No, just pissing around. Sorry. I was going to say, there's been, there have been quite a few cases of certain uh, terrorist factions um, drugging people with, with particular drugs to induce that. So they just go out and do their thing and they have no recollection of what they've done. So 1975 seems a bit early for that. I, didn't, I don't know that was around then, but uh, still very odd, isn't it? Um, Especially if he had his hand on, on the thing two seconds before he crashed didn't try and cover his face so he's, he's obviously been like that and then gone Ugh. yeah uh, very strange mm. anyway uh where are we up to now a matter of existence number four for young taylorius melorius hello 
Happy birthday. A matter of existence. According to Plato. 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 Atlantis existed 9,000 years before he was born. Plato's writings are also the only known records that mention Atlantis. Most scholars believe that Atlantis was simply a fictional place dreamed up by Plato, but some believe it was an actual city that eventually sank beneath the sea. It is also said to have taken an advanced civilization with it when it vanished beneath the surface. There are several theories about Atlantis, including that it is that it was a continent on its own, located in the middle of the Antarctic Ocean before it was submerged. Another theory says that says that the Bermuda Triangle is to blame for Atlantis's disappearance. Yet another theory is that Atlantis lies over the lost city of Atlantis. Antarctica. Oh, and, uh, Antarctica uh, lies over the lost city. You so confused, my God. And that it's still frozen underneath thick layers of ice. Did Play Plato invent Atlantis and model the idea of it after his version of an ideal civilization? Or is Atlantis laying deep down in the depths of the sea just waiting to be discovered? See, there's been so many um, pieces of evidence turning up lately. Um, on previous shows, Wayne and I have said about how, how literally just the last two years, although it's been a shit show for people with COVID and, you know, people unfortunately losing their lives, etc., it has been brilliant for new evidence regarding ancient mysteries. And Atlantis, um, as far as I can tell, was a real place. It wasn't just made up by Plato. Um, Joe said, I got confusion. I got confusion. <laughs> um and now they found there was there was an ancient continent that they thought was a myth and a legend, but they've now found that the uh, two continental shells uh, it was a uh, the European continent and something else. Basically, this this lost continent was down by what is now Italy, Spain, and that area. And when the two shells went, because there was sea there as well, it it just excuse my language, screwed everything. Um, and they think that Atlantis was around well, that area. And when... that this episode, so you don't have to excuse yourself. Sorry? I just dropped Finley and went, oh, shit. So, yeah, to excuse it, It's the rear view mirror, and we got the dark view mirror, and, and there's a lot of swearing, and everybody knows this, so, I, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's been more and more evidence come to light. They've now found this lost continent that they thought was legendary, and they think that Atlantis was in this lost continent before it went under. And also more and more and more really good evidence is coming to light that there were people before us, there were precursors, um, and that they were highly advanced, way more advanced than we what we are. Um, but if you look into the... Sorry? It doesn't take much. No, no. But if you look at all the legends and everything and put it together along with the evidence that's coming to light, Every 50,000 years or so, we have a reset. Um, and there were people before us, there were precursors, and little pockets of them survived and mixed in, and this, the end result is us. And before them, there was a reset. Little pockets of them survived, which made the precursors before us, and it ad infinitum, you know? So, I mean, depleted uranium's been discovered 1.5 million years old. You only get that literally through the refining process. It's not found in nature. You can only get it via a man-made process. So 1.5 million year old depleted uranium. It just just points to everything get being way, way, way before us. And then when you look at all the stuff about the Egyptians and the Greeks and the gods and the Parthenons, and if you look at all the different Parthenons of the gods, same amount of gods, all had the same jobs, just appeared to different civilizations in different guises. Makes you wonder. What do you reckon? I'm just reading the next one. It's mad. <laughs> okay, well, I'll read that one then. Oh, I just read Yeah, ancient civilizations and that, yeah. Do you think there were people before us? Yeah. Hmm. There's proof that there were people before us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, this, oh, what's this one called? Robert Rayford. 
Robert Rayford, or Robbie as he was affectionately known, was around 15 years old in 1968. So bear in mind that year. Keep that year in your head. 1968. Sorry? About as old as you. No, it's older than me. I was born in 1972. Oh, yeah. At that time, he started developing intense pelvic pain, testicular swelling and difficulty breathing and sores broke out all over the body. Uh, the doctors who examined him soon suspected that the teenager had been subjected to sexual abuse as he tested positive for severe chlamydia, which had already spread throughout his system. Oh, oh at 15 years old, poor guy. poor guy. Robbie told the doctors different stories about his sexual history. And bearing in mind, 50, around 15 years old, saying that he'd slept with only one girl and then saying that he was still a virgin. Uh, unfortunately, Robbie Rayford died in May 1969 after contracting pneumonia. A year leaving, after. A year after, yeah. Leaving medical personnel stunned as to what the true cause of his death may have been because his other symptoms just didn't gel. And again, remember the year that this started, 1968, and he died in 69. That's when man first set foot on the moon. Yeah. Right. So after this poor, poor guy died, they saved some of his cells in cold storage and moved on. 20 years later, 1989, the world was in the grip of the AIDS uh, pandemic. Um, for those of you who are too young to know, AIDS acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Um, and it, it started, I think it started off with monkeys and then for some reason uh, became yeah. right in the gay so community. Cool, yeah. yeah. I don't know why it became rife in the gay community, but uh, lots and lots of people died of it back then. Now, it's one of those things that's controlled with drugs, you know, and people, I don't think, die from it anymore. Um, you, you still can, but I think the drugs <laughs> prevent your death for, like, years. It, it, it's, it's just manageable now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, one of the doctors who treated Robbie Rayford tested his saved tissue samples from 1969 using the Western blot test only to find that it tested positive for antibodies against all nine detectable HIV proteins. Robbie Rayford died in May 1969. And all I can say is odd. Speculation ensued, and some doctors believe uh, Rayford uh, was patient zero in the AIDS epidemic. This is 20 years before the AIDS epidemic. However, he could not have contracted it via international travel, as he never left the Midwestern United States where he was born. This means he never travelled to New York, San Francisco or LA, Los Angeles, where the disease first started causing havoc in America. While it remains unconfirmed how Rayford contracted HIV 20 years before AIDS was even identified, some experts believe he'd been forced into trial prostitution. That also sounds like he was the tester for it. Unwit unwitting tester for if he says because he was like no i had sex with a girl oh wait now i'm a virgin what if he was raped by a man but it makes you think that for something that happened 20 years later how is somebody 20 years beforehand at 15 years old how did he get it you know it's like it's like the covid one oh it escaped from a lab where there's no, there was no cure for it. rubbish. If you've got a, a, something like that in a lab, you have the cure for it. Everybody, everybody who's, who knows anything knows that in virology labs, everything. If you've got something that that like that, you have a cure for it. Um, and yet, it mysteriously escaped from a lab. And before that, they tried to say it came from a wet market, and then they said it came from the lab behind the wet market. It's like the Ebola breakout that happened. Oh, look, it accidentally broke out. Mm. It, came, it came with COVID. Accidentally broke out. Hmm. I don't think it accidentally broke out at all. And a lot of people don't think that. Anyway, what do you reckon, Taylor? I think it's a stroke of good luck that they saved his... Uh, yeah, isn't his it? ...and kept him for 20 years. But also, I'm wondering if they saved his stem uh, stem cells and skin cells, etc., from 20 years beforehand. If he was patient zero for as a, a you know on being the poor bugger that AIDS was unwittingly tested on, would that mean that he they, their skins from those skin cells they would be able to invent a cure or some sort of 
drug that's kept it at bay. And do you think that that's what has given the breakthrough towards all these drugs for AIDS? That's literally what they've said. Did they? Yeah, it contains antigens to all nine detectable AIDS things, HIV protein. No, it just means that they found... Set, uh, well, set. yeah, but you're not going to find antigens for all nine of them and then be like, you know what, can I just leave it? You're gonna... Joe, says, Joe says, why did they save them? Uh, because they weren't sure at the time when he died what he died from. They thought it was like, uh, was it mad syphilis? Pneumonia. They said chlamydia. Chlamydia, that's it, that's it. And that's then it. he got pneumonia and died. Yeah, but then they um, decided to save the cells. Um, I don't know if you know back then they used to save various cells of people if they weren't sure why they died basically so that um, in the future our medical science would have come forward that much so we could look at it properly and go ah that's what it was so I'm wondering if he was patient zero sounds uh, just sound a little sus doesn't it 20 next, years beforehand the next one is interesting Okay, this one is Fort Hood Deaths. In 2020 alone, 39 soldiers stationed at Fort Hood Army Base in Texas died or vanished. Among these, 13 took their own lives, 5 were murdered, and 11 remained unsolved. Additionally, Army data showed that around 129 fel felonies had been committed at the base between 2014 and 2019. And these crimes varied between murder, kidnapping, aggra aggravated assault, rape, and more. This, these shocking stats are higher than that of American deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan, Ag Afghanistan during the same year. In October 2021, yet another soldier was found dead behind the barracks at Fort Hood. 26-year-old SPC. I... I don't know what it's an American rank. I've got no idea. Okay. Uh, Maxwell Hopkins. Oh, could be specialist. I don't know. Uh, body was found just days after a soldier had been reported missing. Return, but returned to the base un unharmed. As of this writing, Hopkins' death has not been re revealed. Cause of death has not been revealed. Sorry. The numbers are alarming and have increased significantly since 2014. The reasons behind the Fort Hood slayings, deaths and disappearances remain unknown, but ongoing investigations have been implemented to try and curb the seemingly un unrestrained flow of tragedy. It does seem very odd that one particular base has got that. I mean, we had that over here with um, deaths going on at a particular base, and that seems to have stopped now, but I think that the... Uh, people who were involved in it have all uh, been dealt with. Um, yeah, that's what we said, Joe. If he was a patient zero, who was the person he got it from? That's what they don't know. That's what they were saying because he said, first of all, he said he slept with a girl. Then he said he was a virgin. And now they think that he was forced into child prostitution, child prostitution and was unfortunately uh, raped by a man. But either way, it seems pretty strange. Hey? That's what I think, because also, back then, like, that wasn't that long ago. How could you get pneumonia? Because, I mean, if he's going to a doctor in America, he's obviously got money. How are you getting pneumonia? Um, AIDS, when, when, when you get it, most of the guys that died in the 80s and 90s from AIDS, it you catch everything. It's acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So your immune your immunity to everything goes... And you catch everything, and that was that was predominantly what was killing people off in the end was the pneumonia. Uh, because, because like how happened. COVID, like how they say that COVID, like you don't you don't have a lot of deaths from COVID. It's from what happens after you survive COVID. It, it, it's the ongoing things, like like that's why they needed the oxygen tent, oxygen tents and stuff for uh, COVID because it was affecting people's respiratory tracts and everything. Uh, that's why if you've had the jabs, it it decreases your chance of of dying from a lot of that stuff. So I've had three. I've had three jabs as well. But yeah, it just seems very odd that uh, twenty years before the AIDS epidemic, this this kid 
unfortunately died from AIDS. Very, very strange that. Um, we've only got two to go, and we've still got another 20 minutes. One to go. Hey? One. Oh, we've only got one to go, and we've still got 20 minutes to go. So I uh, I will find us another, another list in a second. Hang on, where are we? The Strange Burial. Um, and it's got a picture of a bird's skull. During the 1960s, a shallow grave was discovered in the tunnel... Ooh... Ooh, Wilkie, Wilkie Cave, Tunnel tunnel Wilkie Cave System in the Jurassic Highland of Poland. If that's Polish, that would be Tunnel Wilkie. Yeah. Um, inside it lay the skeleton of a child with a tiny skull inside the gaping hole that used to be her mouth. Ooh. Proper examination of the remains was only completed recently, and it was found that the small skull was that of a finch. And another bird skull was also found alongside the remains. It has since been determined that the remains belong to a young girl, perhaps between 10 and 12 years old, and that a bird had been placed in her mouth when she was buried. It is believed that the girl had come to the country with the Finnish troops who invaded Poland during the 17th century. Um, this is the only Scandinavian bird-headed burial that has ever been discovered in the area, and the girl's cause of death also remains a mystery. Scandinavian bird-headed burial. What the hell is a Scandinavian bird-headed burial? Um, I've just posted what we are reading off of Sheldon Facebook into the comments. There you go, guys. That's the list that we've just read about. Um, shall we do uh, do a bit of one more? Do you want to find a Do you want to find a particularly pantwettingly one? And is it like, why when you bury somebody, or is it is it something that's a right that's safe for children? You put a bird bird in the mouth. Oh, very odd. Uh, now you find it because I'm looking up the Scandinavian bird headed burial. Oh, okay, right. Uh, let's have a look. Um, ooh, what's this one? Shall we have some a ritual? Yeah, I think it's some sense kind of ritual, but I've never heard of it. Uh, we have got bizarre mysteries. Shall we have a bit, a bit of that? Oh, yeah, it would help if you knew if you had this, wouldn't it, Taylor? Hang on. <laughs> Let me just send, just bear with me. I've just got to send Taylor this. Taylorious, hey, made Lorious. Right. There you go. I've sent you the link. Thanks, love. You got it? Yeah. Okay. You can start with number 10. All right. Three seconds. It's our mistress part two. Did you find out what the uh, Scandinavian bird... So it says... Um, it didn't say anything about... One second, I can't... It didn't say anything about... Um, fuck me. No, I don't think it would have said anything about that. It didn't, actually, funny enough. Uh, it didn't say anything about a bird head, but it said that some Scandinavian warriors, I think it says Scandinavian warriors, were found to be laid to rest on a really luxurious bedding, and inside them there were feathers from, like, Eagle owls, normal owls, sparrow, sparrows, crows, a bunch of birds. Hmm, I'll have to have a look for that later on. I'll, one second, I'll read it right now. In uh, two 7th century warriors in an ancient burial grounds in Sweden were laid to rest with comfy bedding, oh, the bedding, stuffed with Feathers from a variety of birds. Research shows new microscopic analysis of the bedding shows traces of feathers from local geese, ducks, grouse, crows, sp sparrows, waddos, and even eagle owls. But then the there is nothing else about a bird headed, uh, like a bird head in the mouth, 
burial. No. Other than that little girl. It's Zara, isn't it? It just says that uh, the bedding was made from bird feathers and stuff. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's crack on with because uh, we've done some. Uh, we did a top ten list last year, sometime beginning last year, on bizarre mysteries, and this is a continuation on from that. This is another ten bizarre mysteries, and my beautiful assistant will now tell you number ten. Right. Have we got the same one? Yes. What's the first? What's number ten? Uh, Michael. Okay. Both right. Yeah. Okay. One of the strangest recent tales of amnesia, amnesia is the story of Michael Boatwright. On February 28, 2013, the 61-year-old was found unconscious in a, in a Motel 6 in Palm Springs, California. When he awoke in an emergency room, the American, who had a driver's license in his own name, spoke only Swedish and claimed that his name was... Johan. John, J Johan Eck. Or Eek. Johan Eck, I think. <laughs> Not only had he forgotten his native language, but he no longer recognised his own face. Boatwright's sister later emerged, claiming her brother was a wanderer and saying that she hadn't seen him in a decade. Other than his memory loss, Boatwright seems in good health. Diagnosed with transitive global amnesia, doctors believe that Boatwright suffered some kind of psychological trauma. Others believe he might be faking in an attempt to escape some element in his past. Yeah. However, however, it seems unlikely, as the case has only put him under intense public scrutiny. The true story of Michael Boatwright may never be uncovered. But there's See, so I many, there's so many things of people having strokes, and then when they come back from the stroke, they speak a, a completely different language that they don't even know. And head injuries. It's, it's been it's been a, a anything that's to do with a certain part of the brain. Um, There's so many things where if you have a head injury, it just gives you a superpower. Just gives you powers. Can you imagine? Not, not actual like I can see through walls and stuff, but people have had inj head injuries and they can speak like seven languages. I know the one about uh, there was a guy and he I think he had. I think he came off a push bike, um, and he was he was a a, a bricklayer or something, so, some kind of manual labour, and he, he came off his push push bike, hit his head, was in a coma, and when he came to, he is now a piano, that like literally piano virtuoso prodigy, never played the piano in his life. And yeah, when I he, saw that. He, when he came to, he, he's like, Doo -doo -doo -doo, and he, and and even he's like. <laughs> He came to and he was like really into music all of a sudden. And yeah. for a while, he was just kind of going through and like listening to all different genres. And he tried like guitars and all that stuff. And then he found a piano and he was just like straight away got it. Yeah. And and yeah, Dave says I could do with a bit of amnesia. <laughs> Couldn't we all, mate? Um, but yeah, there's there's been quite a few cases of people coming to from, from their um, comas and having just bizarre things that they they would never like uh one there was another one i wasn't there i think you know about this one he, he became a chef and they never they weren't interested in cooking never liked cooking etc 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 and same thing accident hit head coma came out and they were like oh do you know what and they were cooking all this stuff that was that top chefs should have difficulty doing and they were just going do -do 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 -do, doing it you know bizarre but there are lots and lots of cases of people coming to and forgetting or accents that's the other thing accents um coming like that to. woman that had a stroke and now she speaks with a chinese accent and everyone thinks that she's just being racist but she's not it's just her accent she hates it she cries a lot i've seen it yeah yeah oh hang on dave says hold my beer i'm about to give myself a head injury i need a super <laughs> oh, i don't know um oh, well. Yeah, and there, there was another one. There was somebody. Oh, I remember they, they had a program about it on Channel Four, and there was a woman. Same thing, and and they, all of them had the developed these accents after a head injury. And what? And there was a woman who. There was a woman who who had a Welsh accent. There was another one. French. She spoke flu, 
French, like it was a native language and English was second. Strong French accent. And it's just bizarre, just bizarre. Um, anyway. Uh, right, what's this one? Einstein's last words. Men have been known to impart their greatest wisdom when teetering on the precipice of death. For example, Humphrey Bogart advised, I should have never switched from scotch to martinis, which is good advice no matter how you shake it. Um, physicist Albert Einstein hardly requires an introduction. Uh, beside his contributions to science, he was well known for his witticisms. It's Actually, annoying. I've just read it. It's really annoying. Just keep reading it. Uh, these remarks touch on an array of topics from political to war to, to religion to the tangible glory of the human spirit. In his 76th year, the venerable professor suffered internal bleeding from an abdominal aneurysm. He was remanded to the Princeton Hospital where he refused surgery, having recognised that his time was up. He died the following morning, but not long, not before uttering a few final words, which were overheard by an attending nurse. Unfortunately, these words were spoken in Einstein's native German, a language with which the nurse was unfamiliar. They have been lost forever. Oh, my God! What? Can you just try and remember? Can you imagine that? Einstein, like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, do, do me satisfied, uh, yeah. I don't think he would have said that. He might have done it. It was German. It was might have been his last words. He may not have liked the nurse, and he may have said that to her. Right, we have time to discuss one more, then. Uh, I think we've got a couple. We've got two, two, two more, possibly three. Yes. The Austin Yogurt Shop Murders. Yogurt Shop Murders. That's what I said. Late on December 6, 1991, Austin, Texas's I Can't Believe It's Yogurt shop was found engulfed in flames. Somebody Five didn't like the yogurt. Huh? Somebody just didn't like the yogurt then. Firefighters found four teenage girls inside, each bound with their own clothes and shot in the head. Oh, Carry on making your jokes, Dad. Yeah. I can't believe it's not high calibre. Anyway, carry on. Though there are many suspects, the, mo uh, the most likely was notorious serial killer Kenneth Allen McDuff. McDuff had actually been convicted of murder in 1968 and served time on death row but was released in 1989 because of overcrowding in Texas prisons. That's Dave. Another suspect, Maurice Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. Was shot to death in a traffic stop after stabbing a patrolman. Two others confessed to the killings but were released when semen from an unknown man was found on one of the victims what went on inside that restaurant may never truly be known today the yogurt shop is a nail salon with a nearby plaque that honors the victims again i'm sure i've seen a film to that's do with terrifying it. isn't it 10 10 10 i mean yeah i know i, I made a joke but um, poor girls tied up with her own clothes and shot in the head uh, and then now, on them, so obviously there was some form of sexual abuse. Yeah, and semen's just been found on them in a yogurt shop. Semen. Okay. So strange things afoot in a yogurt shop. Let's move on. Why is it lumpy? Sorry. I said why is it lumpy? Why is it lumpy? Uh, more protein in the diet. Not yogurt. Benjamin Powell. Do you want to read Benjamin Powell or do you want me to read Benjamin Powell? You know, what that second word is. Uh, oh, I amnesia, can. Amnesia. Yeah, I don't know. You can read it, though. Right. Benjamin Kyle, another amnesiac. Uh, Benjamin Kyle's case is even more bizarre than boat rights. In the early morning of August 31st, 2004, a middle-aged man was found unconscious lying beside some dumpsters at a Georgia Burger King. Uh, the man was presumed homeless and showed signs of blunt force trauma to his skull, like Boatwright. And like Boatwright, he didn't recognise his own face. 
unlike Boat, right? He had no identification on him or even the slightest inkling as to who he was. Initially dubbed BK for Burger King, Burda? Burger King, he has since chosen the name Benjamin Kyle. Uh, believed to be in his mid-60s, he is a bald Caucasian man, no, uh, granted the dubious honour of being the only American listed as missing, even though he lives in the public eye. He's been diagnosed with disassociative amnesia, which nearly 10 years later seems like it may be permanent. In a world where no communication appears secure, Carl remains a phantom. His fingerprints have been run through every available database, including those controlled by the FBI, US military and government. Uh, DNA testing to provide no clues other than to indicate Scottish ancestry. Uh, he has appeared in innumerable newspaper articles and interviews on both TV and radio, including a high profile appearance on Dr. Phil in 19, uh, 2008. Uh, today, Benjamin Kyle washes dishes for a living and no one is any closer to determining who he really is. Bless. Let's do. have no family members whatsoever to go oh yeah like, that's my granddad or that's my dad do you think some people have recognized him and gone oh no maybe, maybe he, he did a maybe he was a dickhead and then he got beaten yeah. up and then their family were like no nah, no idea possibly hmm. um we'll do a couple more bring it up to an hour we'll get it up to number five do you want to read that one la cruces Las Cruces. Here's another murder, guys. <laughs> La Cruces Bowling Alley Massacre. Massacre? Massacre. On February 10th, 1990, two men staged a vicious execution in a bowling alley in La Cruces, New Mexico. Yeah. They shot several people, killed four, and vanished without a trace. Employees of the bowling alley, two of whom had brought their children, had gathered to open up that Saturday morning when two men burst into the alley intent on robbery. The seven were herded into the bowling alley's office and shot at close range. The gunman stole $4,000 to $5,000, set fire to the office and left. One of the victims, 12-year-old Melissa Repus, yeah. Repus. Repus managed to call the police for help, even though she had been shot five times. Very good. The dead include 26-year-old... The dead include... What happened? He's not watching Finley. The dead included 26-year-old Steve Terrain, or Terran, the the bowling alley mechanic, his two-year-old daughter, Valerie, Melissa's 12-year-old friend, Amy Hauser, and six-year-old Paula Hogan. Yes. The killers were described as Hispanic men, one around 30 and another around 45 or 50. They were never caught. Whether the killings were motivated by revenge or were merely an attempt to eliminate witnesses of the robbery remains unknown. A civil suit was brought against the bowling alley's owner by the mother of Amy Hauser, but jurors eventually found he was not liable. A document called A Nightmare in, Le in Les Cruze, or Cruises was released in 2010. Documentary. That's what that's, I said. That's, that's messed up. Killing kids. No, man. That's, that's messed up. Poor buggers. Uh, and now I will not be making any uh, wisecracks about that particular one. Um, There's a two-year-old uh, in it. I hope they do bloody find them. Um, well, as, Joe, as Joe said about the previous uh, amnesia uh, case, surely someone would have known who he was. You'd have thought so. I think either he was a div and he does possibly know who he is and he's an extremely good actor, or he was a div and family have disowned him, or maybe he genuinely was a loner. Um, I don't know. But as you say, you would have thought someone somebody out there would have recognised him, wouldn't you? Um, right, number five, the Adelaide Oval Abduction. Um, August 25th, 1973, when attending a South Australian National Football League, 
Uh, 11-year-old Joanne Ratcliffe took four-year-old Kirsty Gordon to visit the bathroom. 20 minutes later, they still hadn't returned. Ratcliffe's grandmother went to the stadium office to ask them to make an announcement, but they waited until the game was over before they did. Several eyewitnesses later claimed they saw a man carrying Kirsty with Joanne following, um, seeming to grab at the man. They assumed the man was the children's father. Neither girl was ever seen again. Oh, dear. It's believed that the girls were taken by Arthur Stanley Brown, who was also tied to other mother cases and disappearances of children, including the famous Beaumont case when three siblings aged 10, 7 and 4 were vanished from Glenelg Beach near Adelaide, Australia in 1966. Brown was arrested in 1998 after a cousin of his wife, whom he'd molested, called in to report him for paedophilia. He was tried for the murder of two sisters, Oh, Jesus, seven-year-old Judith and five-year-old Susan, who were killed in 1970. His initial trial resulted in a hung jury, and by the time a retrial was considered, Alzheimer's disease had rendered him unfit. He died in a nursing home in 2002, aged 90, carrying the secret of the untold children with him to his grave. What a... Yeah... That's not very nice, is it, that one? See, that's a bit, it reminds me of like um, when you see things on, uh, you have seen cold case files and stuff like that? Hey, yeah. And when you, when you see stuff like that and it, it's just like no one ever knew um, and all this stuff was done before DNA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, yeah, as Joe says, vile, sick as anything. Do you want to do one more? Yeah, this one isn't uh, depressing. Yeah, this one's all right. I'll let Taylor read this one. Up. We'll finish on a happy note. This is lollipops. I don't know if they're American, but they seem American. They're called Dum Dum Pops. The mystery flavor of Dum Dum Pops is constantly changing, and you are likely to never get one that tastes exactly the same as the last one. So what's the secret? So the company's office web official website plays coy with the idea. Solving this enig enigma isn't nearly as difficult as isolating KFC's signature 11 herbs and spices or Dr. Pepper's 23 flavours. The mystery pops are merely the result of one batch of flavour finishing up and the next batch starting. Instead of taking the time to clean the equipment, the company lets the two batches combine. Thus, the perpetual difference in taste. That's actually quite a good idea. A bit, ew, cleaning equipment now and again. But uh, that's quite a good idea, actually, when you think about it. And Andy has just heard Andy, mate. Ma Andy, Andy, yeah, you've just come in. We've got three left to do. Do you want to, shall we do, do these last three and then we will have done two The next bits. one is the murder. Let's have a look. The one after is. Oh, I remember this one. We, we, this was included in one of our shows. Do you want me to read? And the next, the last one's a murder. The last one's a murder. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, all, yeah. they're all deaths. They're all deaths. Oh, right. I know you need to go because Finney is screaming his head off. So, why is going to bed? Right, you bugger off. I'll read out these last three. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Are we going to be back next next Sunday and do one? Yeah. Uh, seven o'clock or eight o'clock. We need to do a time and leave it at that if we can. Probably seven because Finney goes to bed at eight. But then I'm away the weekend of the 16th. 16th. In two weeks. So the 20th. I won't be here. Okay. But we can get a couple of shows in in between. And then you go away for a week and then come back again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we shall start bringing the rearview mirror back. Thank you for joining us, Taylor. And uh, I will see you tomorrow anyway. So I'll, I'll come over after work. But uh, I'll I'll read out the last three one of these, but and you, uh, yeah. Bye bye to everybody. Say bye 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 everyone. Yeah, straight up, thank you. Oh okay. Um. Bye. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Oh, and uh, Joe says bye. Take care. And Dave does bye. as well. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Right. Just me. I'll read out the last three to you because we might as well finish this list off. Uh, and number three is the beautiful cigar girl. Yeah, this we, we mentioned this in um, a game previous uh, show that we've done. Mm, the mystery of Marie Roger is a short story written by Edgar Allan Poe featuring his master detective C. Auguste Dupin and one of his few that is based on a true story, The Death of Mary Rogers. 
Rogers worked in a tobacco shop in New York City and was known for her many male admirers. Uh, Mary vanished on July 25th, 1841, after telling her fiancé she was going to visit with her family. On July 28th, her corpse was found in the Hudson River. Uh, according to the coroner's report, she had been choked to death and a bruise in the shape of a man's thumb was found on her neck. Uh, the death of the pretty young woman dubbed the beautiful cigar girl by the press made headlines, but over 170 years later, how she came to meet her fate still remains a mystery. Theory suggested she was a victim of a botched abortion, but the prevailing opinion was that she had she was an innocent bystander in a bout of gang violence. Ooh. Spoiler alert, as in real life, the mystery of Marie Roger ends with Dupin failing to uncover the murders. Who's that? Hello, Bob. Hmm. Number two, Little Miss 1565. Oh, bless. There's a gravestone somewhere, and it's and it's got rest on it. Rested in peace here, forty-seven years as Little Miss, fifteen sixty-five. Something on March the eighth, nineteen ninety-one. Well, I'll I'll put the link to this list in in the chat as well for you. Um, the tragic Harford Circus Fire has made an appearance on list verse before. On July the 6th, 1944, a performance of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus was interrupted by a blaze that killed over 160 people. Oh, bugger. Easily the most tragic death was that of Little Miss 1565. A blonde girl of only a few years, oh, bless, whose identity remains unknown. Police investigated for decades and the child's picture was printed in newspapers across the country. But she re remained unidentified number 1565. Uh, and it was the number provided to a corpse in the city's morgue. Hello, Leela. Over the years, several have claimed that her name may have been Eleanor Emily Cook. Eleanor Cook was killed at the scene, but her body was never identified. She was likely one of the two children, oh, bless, burnt beyond recognition in the fire. I'm sorry for the details of this one. Um, although Eleanor's mother vehemently denied that the mystery child was her daughter, the body was eventually exhumed and buried next to Edward Cook, Eleanor's brother, who was also killed in the blaze. Uh, and it's likely that Little Miss 1565's true identity will never be known. Poor little sods. Mm. Well, I'll we'll, I'll bring in number one, and that'll be the end of this uh, particularly murderous list. So, uh, uh, but wouldn't you have thought they would reopen cases now? Now we have the DNA, etc., and how it's come along. Um, there have been cases reopened a couple years later. Yeah, you would have thought so, but I'll, I don't know about exhuming the body of a, of a little girl. Mm. Um, anyway, number one, the Keddy murders. I've not, I've not heard of these. Um, no, nope, spoiler alert, apparently it's horrifying. The horrifying Keddy murders bring to mind hockey mass machete-wielding maniacs roaming the forest. That sounds familiar. Um on April the 11th, 18, 1981, while vacationing in a resort town near the Sierra Nevada mountains, Glenna Sharp, two of her children and a family friend, oh God, met a grizzly end in the cabin, in their cabin. On the morning of April the 12th, Sharp's 14-year-old daughter, who'd been staying in another cabin with friends, returned to, oh bless, returned to find her mother, her brother John, and their teenage friend Dana dead. Uh, the sister Tina, age 13, was missing. Uh, the interior of cabin 28 had been destroyed. Blood was splattered over every surface. The furniture was smashed and the walls had been gouged with blades. The bodies were bound with tape and horribly mutilated. Three younger children who had been staying in the cabin were found, were also found, but they were unharmed. They claimed that two assailants had tortured the family with kitchen knives and a claw hammer over a period of 10 hours. Jesus. Taking Tina with them when they left. Uh... Though there was another cabin just five metres, 15 feet away, and uh, though the pr primeval carnage must surely have been noisy, neighbours claim they never heard a thing. 15 feet away, people scream, uh, they were bound, but you know, I thought they'd have heard something. Uh, a massive investigation was launched with FBI involvement, but no leads or suspects have ever found, uh, panned out. In 1984, the skull of Tina Sharp was found in another camp some 50 miles away. In the years since, 
since there was taught that cabin 28 was haunted uh the resort has fallen into disrepair and uh, was frequented by squatters and vandals <clears throat> people claim to have seen figures lurking behind the windows and hearing unearthly moan moans in the murder cabin uh the owner raised the building in 2004 good um oh that was pleasant mind you it wouldn't be a rearview mirror if we did uh nice lists would it i mean uh tonight's list has been full of murder and mayhem some particularly grisly ones um i will put the link for this particular list here in the chat room let's see if i can do this again without oh, hang on right that's better right list so this one in the chat room for you why can't i post can't post comments to facebook groups what oh apparently i that's bizarre i can't i can't post in the in the chat in this um no i'm gonna have to sort that out what i'll do i'll go to uh the dark mirror radio shows group page are you gonna let me go to the group page right here we go and i'll post the link to this particular uh list up there now for you all right i'll just put list two list two there you go But you can post us a live on the live as a comment. Oh, yeah, I'm a dick. Right. Oh, hi, bold boy. You all right, mate? Um, we've just finished. Literally just finished. Yeah, what I'll do, um, I've just put it up on the, the Dark Mirror Radio Show's wall for you guys. Um, and I, I'll, I'll put it up in the uh, comment section down there of the chat as well, all right? Thank you for that, Joe. Um, so, yeah, there you go. We've not been back with a, a rearview mirror for a while with various things that have been happening, i.e. Uh, Finley and Taylor and uh, Sheldon being away and everything. So she's back, they're back for a few weeks, so having a weekend away, I think, in two weeks or three weeks, whichever it is. But we'll be back each Sunday at 7 p.m., hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, from now on. So remember, the Dark Mirror show has... Uh, moved its time on Fridays to half past nine. So every Friday we'll be back at half past nine. And fingers crossed, Wayne's internet will be fine this week. So we'll come. We'll be back with the show on Friday. And uh... <laughs> thank you, Joe. Um, and uh, yeah, on Sundays seven o'clock we'll be back with the rearview mirror with myself and Taylorius Melorius. So on um, until Friday, fingers crossed. Uh, I will see you guys then, and I'll also put the link to this list to down in the in the comments as soon as i finished all right thank you very much for joining us thank you very much for watching and for those of you who turned up late thank you for joining us anyway um this will be on the wall the group the the, the group page the dark mirror radio shows group page so you can watch this if you want so until friday i will see you guys later oh and i'm thinking about getting a sweatshirt or a hoodie done for the show just watch your space because something might be happening soon Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you all. Who said that? See you later, Dave, mate. I, hopefully I'll see you. It's uh, your mum your mom and uh, Pugs' soon. See you later, guys. Take it easy. Bye.